Welcome again to the 18th group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells at Hanover Fair 2012. Um, I'd like to invite you all to uh, just sit down and get yourself a free coffee or a free drink. Uh, join us for our next conversation, which will be with um, Weiland GmbH. I'll be uh, introducing to you in just a minute uh, Alexander Dauensteiner, who is product manager of innovation at Weiland. And um, we are going to hear about Weiland fuel cell heating demonstration successfully started. So please um, join me in welcoming Alexander Dauensteiner. <coughs> okay, I'm going to actually uh, put the first question to you, the audience. Was there by any chance anybody here last year at the Hanover Fair 2011? Um, is there anyone who was here and remembers Weiland making a promise <laughs> last year? If so, can I have a hand sign? No one. Okay, okay. well then let me tell you that they did make a promise. Uh, at the last Hanover Fair 2011, I believe you sat here and you announced that you would go and do something quite remarkable. Mm -hmm that with your Calex test, which, uh, which was introduced last year, uh, Weiland would create a milestone in fuel cell heating appliances. So I just want to actually start with a little provocation and ask you, <laughs> did you do it? Did you keep your promise? And if so, what happened? Yeah, uh, indeed, we, we promised that this was a very important milestone last year, and we indeed kept it. Um, last year, we uh, demonstrated the first time a wall hung heating appliance here at the Hanover Fair and uh, promised really that this was a very important milestone in the last year and we indeed started the test in, in October so uh, this was important because it's uh, totally different if you come from a lab demonstration to a field trial demonstration this is a completely different approach and therefore we are very happy that we achieved this milestone successfully in the last year Yes. And just for those who are not in the know, just briefly in a sentence, the Calyx uh, test, what is it? Calyx field trial is um, the biggest field trial for fuel cell heating appliances uh, in the meantime in Europe. Uh, yesterday we had a, a discussion here uh, with uh, um, people coming from the European Commission announcing that it's currently being uh, evaluated if it's possible to do so something in, an, in a European-wide field trial as well, but Calux itself is a German field trial where uh, utilities in Germany, together with heating manufacturers, testing fuel cell heating appliances in a real home, in real applications, in order to get out from the lab and to collect experience really in the field trial, because this is, as I said, a completely different approach. Um, it is planned to install a number of hundreds of systems, that means uh, a significant number really to gain experience in the field trial. So next to what you just shared, um, are there any other reasons why you decided to do this? Any other goals you're pursuing with that next to what you already uh, uh, listed now? Yeah, we, um, we already had some important field trials in the past before Calux started. So Weiland was one of the first heating manufacturers starting developing of heating uh, appliances, micro CHP, uh, based on fuel cells. So we started already with uh, the support of European Commission and also the Department of Energy in Washington uh, in uh, uh, 2001 to 2003 and three to five different field trials, but based on the low temperature PEM system. Uh, the challenge now was um, assuming that uh, after the evaluation of low temperature PEM, high temperature PEM and SOFC, uh, we took the decision that SOFC is the most promising approach. And then switching from this technology to the SOFC technology, this is not easy. And therefore we had a lot of lab testing and uh, it's important now really to get experiences out of the field trial. Then a lab uh, experience is nice and important in order to find out if a technology is really reliable and has the potential uh, to fulfill the customer requirements. But to see if this is really the case, you need to go into real applications, and that is what we do in Carlos. So all technologies have to make this journey from the lab to the real yeah. world. And I just have a, actually f almost a personal question out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, in the real world, how long does it, I, does, it, does, it, does, it, does it actually take to install a system like the one that you're testing and offering? 
That, that is uh, in a very short time possible. We uh, have a normal installation where we have a pre-installation of a controller and a peak heater in the, in the basement, in the cellar, in the home. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, we will take one additional day to install the fuel cell in itself. So all over, we can account that uh, uh, installation beginning from the first work of the installer up to the final uh, start of the system of the fuel cell heating appliance will take no more longer than four to five days in the demonstration program. Okay. In the market, it will be done in within one day. That's clear. Yeah, because then you have no no measurements any longer. You have a simpler system. So the target is really to have an installation uh, completely done within one day. Let's stay with your customer and their reality uh, for a moment longer. How would you say, uh, how would you define where, where is the, the, the actual value for the customer? Um, w you know, when does this value really accumulate value? Mm -hmm. Can you say a little bit about that? So where is the value? What exactly is it? Yeah. We have, um, I think we have a really a challenge and a change in the energy world at that moment. Not only in Germany, but in particular in Germany after we decided from a government perspective to shut down all nuclear power plants. Uh, yeah. We have a limited time of resources. Resources become more and more uh, cost effective. And the normal homeowner, the normal people who are living in our homes, we have all one challenge that is uh, described. Uh, how safe is my energy future? Can I pay my bill for electricity and heat in 10, in 15 years? So this is one challenge we are facing. And Weiland is one of the oldest heating companies in Europe. And we know about that customer expectation, also about the increasing customer fear. Can I really pay my energy bill in the future? First approach is to decrease the energy demand in the home. That means insulate the buildings as possible, as much as possible to decrease the demand. So efficiency. Efficiency in the home. So if, if you do that, and if you can do that, and often is not possible maybe when you have an old home you cannot really insulate that easily if you build a new home it's better and relatively easy so the big market um, is the replacement market where old heating systems broke down and a new system has to be installed and within that market micro CHP is one of the major markets we see in the future we have launched the EcoPower One. This is a product uh, with a gas engine together with our partner Honda, which is available in the market in the meantime. And micro CHP based on fuel cell is the technology of the future. Um, the benefit you mentioned for the customer is relatively easy. He becomes in a situation where the independence increases. That means the dependency of the energy supplier today, uh, where we all have to buy gas and electricity, decreases because you able to produce your own electricity in your home. And the value of the customer is really to decrease their own energy bill. So in the total cost of gas and electricity, micro CHP is much cheaper than with a normal condensing boiler together with electricity. And you mean almost plant. immediately? Immediately, if you, if you install a system today, it's depending on the uh, system requirements, on the installation, on the energy demand of the home, uh, also, if you have two people or five people in the home, sure. But this is uh, really a immediately starting benefit for the customer that they can in decrease the energy costs. That is uh, a value which we, yeah, from the beginning on, we can deliver. At this point, do we have any questions from the audience? I say it again, don't, don't be shy. We want to hear <laughs> what you are curious about and what you'd like to know. Excellent. I'll come to you. Hi, uh, Scott Dwyer from Delta. Uh, Alexander, I was just wondering what you've learned from the installers. Uh, what have they thought about the installing of the fuel cell micro CHP? And um, you know, were mm. they um, you know were they easy to encourage or you know were they enthusiastic? Uh, we we have both. We have um, installers which we need, need to, and this is, I think, a general requirement for the installers. We need to train them very well. This is a new technology. This needs to be explained very carefully also with regards to the customer expectations. 
Um, and it's not that easy as you install a normal condensing boiler in a home today. Um, but in, within the Calux field trial, we are currently installing the systems. We have a very good relationship and, and partnership with, with the uh, utilities. So we have a close um, yeah, contact to train the people very well. And if you do that, installation is taking very carefully and very smoothly. There's no big problem. On the other side, we have really experienced that if you do not train the people very carefully, you see a lot of crazy things in the market. So this is one of the major challenges. No regards with fuel cells. This is uh, necessary for all the different micro CHP technologies. Because as I said, this is a different approach. This needs to be uh, planned in upfront for the customer, depending on the house and the requirements. Needs to explain them very well. We do not have to overpromise something. Explain it in detail, say what he can expect, and say also what he cannot expect. Uh, we have a solution which is very attractive for the future, also for the installers, because this can also be a new business model for installers. So all over, I would say, if you train them very carefully, uh, we have no problems in installation. That works. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, I would also like to turn your attention to a few slides that we have running up on the screen that give a bit of a tangible example of what we're talking about here. So we, uh, we've established that there was a successful test now, but allow me <laughs> to play devil's advocate for a moment. Um, because some might say that despite uh, successes, this is taking maybe a little bit long, mm. the whole process of, of bringing this to market and this being a reality for all of us. Mm -hmm. So. What does it take to become the next Apple in this industry? I think the, the first question you raised is a question which I confronted it since 10 years now. Um, as I moved from uh, my university degree up to some work in, in institutes and become an employee of Weiland, my impression of product development was a completely different one than today. Um, I had the chance in the past period of time to develop with an engineering team different products and now I'm taking responsible for the way to market for fuel cells. And what you can learn definitely is that a development of a product needs to be much more effort than you ever can imagine. Vineland is a brand which is since more than 140 years now well known in the, in the industry. And we have a clear customer expectation, which is highest quality, highest reliability, and sustainable products. And if you can fulfill this with a product, you will be successful in the future. If not, you will fail. What I can definitely can say is that a normal development of an innovative approach, we are not talking about a new generation of condensing boiler here. We are talking about really a, what we call so far revolution in the basements today, uh, you have to calculate at least 15 to 20 years for product development. And everyone who is involved in that industry uh, will recognize definitely that from the very first idea to a very reliable product, the time is needed. And we are very convinced that we are in a good way. We have started the first studies with fuel cell heating appliances already in 1997. So we have tested low temperature PEM, we have tested high temperature PEM, and we have tested SFC. I think we are the one and only manufacturer who can really say we have a clear understanding of the different technologies, we have a clear understanding of the market, we have a wide portfolio of micro CHP in the market, and we know that the customer are sometimes a little bit impatient, that they need to have the product as soon as possible, sure. But we can deliver and will deliver the product when it's really reliable and ready. Um, and that is important and not who is the, the fastest one on the market because I have a lot of examples in the, in the last period of time which a too fast market introduction fails at the end and this can damage the complete industry. And uh, all the manufacturers, apart from Weiland as well we, have the responsibility that we do it very carefully in order to not to damage the full industry. That is, that is the main target. And if it takes one year later or one year longer, or not is not the matter of fact at the end. So are there any further questions uh, from the audience? It, it seems to me that one of the key messages emerging from this conversation is really, uh, you know, there's a difference between the lab and there's a difference between the real world. And this is a transition that needs to be made and it needs made properly um, in order to ensure quality, really. Yeah. Um, 
but the Apple thing, I think, uh, this is an interesting, uh, um, yeah, approach. I think uh, what I have really um, um, seen uh, looking at such very um, successful companies like Apple, that the approach of the Apple and why they are so successful is, first, they have seen on a wide period of time a very fantastic product approach that we do not any longer control computers and phones uh, with knobs and something like that, just with the finger. This is one thing. The second was a perfect marketing. And the third one, and this is, I think, what is seen not in the first level of recognition, is that we, that Steve Jobs and the company has really uh, successful in control the company in that way that a certain level of freedom for the developers and engineers and controllers and all the people working for Apple has created exactly that what he has in mind long years ago in order to say in 2000 and X we will control computers via one knob and just with the finger. And, and this something else is, is something which you have to balance with the industry, which is not easy. And I must say, we cannot compare the heating company with Apple, but a long-term development and the belief in a future, which is a vision at the first, this is one, one thing which we believe is an approach which we would like to follow and which we are really convinced that we can achieve that also with this fuel cell heating compliance at the end. Wonderful. So it's, it's pr uh, product innovation, it's marketing, but it's also vision management, effective vision management. And, and, um, and you are the product manager uh, for innovation, so that's, that's an interesting insight. And it's almost a perfect moment uh, and, and statement to, to, f to finish on. But really, really quickly, in a minute if possible, can I just yeah. quickly ask you, Going back to the bigger picture, you know, um, given given what you what you call debasement revolution, and and we know there is a new energy turn in Germany now. Um, mm -hmm. There is the national innovation program, mm -hmm. uh, and we're 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 needing to focus and 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 generate economies of scale really. Yeah. So, with the current role of subsidy and and mm -hmm. government uh, uh, involvement in this industry sector. Um, what is the strategy in just a minute mm -hmm. that you can pursue to ultimately become independent of this mm -hmm. and so for the sustainable sector to become sustainable economically? Mm -hmm. First of all, we have a perfect strategy in Germany, perfect support of R&D and demonstration by the German government for micro CHP fuel cells and in fuel cells general. That is great and is very important for companies not only for us, but also for others. The challenge now is going from the path from the technology development and R&D, from the lab in the demonstration towards a commercial product, and this is different. What we have to do now is to really get the, the curve to decrease costs by increased volumes. Right. This is normal Economy for innovation. System, yeah. And I think we are currently working together with those partners in policy and industry to create exactly that, yeah, last defining phase for success. And I'm convinced that we are on a good road. I'm convinced that we can manage this, but do not stop now with the support. And we, are, we have clear plans to decrease funding. We are not willing to wish a 10 or 20 years funding for the end customer to pay the high costs. This has to be defined. It has to be stopped at a certain time to decrease on a certain level. But now we have to create exactly that path. Good luck and thank you so much for joining us today. You can thank speak you. to uh, Alexander Dauensteiner and Weiland at um, stand E51 uh, today or right for the there. rest of the week. Thank you ever so much. Please join me in thank thanking you. Alexander Dauensteiner. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Right. Okay, a very, very quick um, handover now. The next session, which will start right now, will be called Energy Storage with Hydrogen as a Necessary Component of the German Energy Transformation and will be joined by uh, Professor Dr. K. Andreas Friedrich, uh, head of the Department of Electrochemical Engine Energy Technology at the Deutsche Zentrum für Luft- und Raumfahrt e.V. DLR ITT. Thank you very much.